recording has started. Okay. Um, so status. So last this was last week. We talked about the gallery and the different features, and I will give you an update. Uh, we talked about the change logs, how the versions were good. Everything is on track from this list. Um, blah blah status harvest release. So today is um, 8 2015. Uh, so gallery will talk about harvest. We have talked already. Uh, status demos. Any demos? What? Nothing? No way. Okay, more time status then. Maybe bug triage slash release. Um, this, um, what else? Topics? Someone wants to talk about something? I, I guess I could demo. Do we, do we need any demos today? Yeah, it's time for demos, I assume. Well, isn't it one? Yes, close all tabs. Um, demos, maybe Nick wants to show something. Okay, good. Uh, so let's start with the gallery. So I worked the past week on the Gary V next. Please interrupt me if I talk too much. Um, what did I do? So this is the current state. Um, basic bootstrap, just it has to be theme. I just wanted two things. Uh, first, the site to work. <laughs> Uh, with packages and package versions, um, with distinctions between module and themes, taxonomies, and all the data that we need. I also wanted to start the import of the data from the old website, and uh, I will show you how I did that. It's very interesting, uh, in my opinion. So the implementation is based this way. I made an Orchard Gallery module, okay, which will I won't go into details, just if people want to ask questions, I will answer. So our joint gallery module, which will contain all the logic and the data types. And I also made a gallery theme just to display packages and package versions specifically. Okay, just to have something separate from the theme machine. And I used Bootstrap uh, as a base for uh, the theme. Uh, so in the end, we have a page which so shows um, modules. So this page is driven by the search API because everything will be searchable. So the front end needs to be from the search API. So these packages are written from the search API. Uh, these are all the packages. Not the there is packages and package versions. These are the list of packages and they are imported from the old website. Uh, this is what is called a summary. So a one-liner. Okay. And uh, this is the package name, which is different from the package ID. So this is the title. The URL is constructed using a custom route in the metadata, which points to, you can see, um, slash packages, the package ID. And when I click on one, you see the title, the summary, the description, which can be full HTML and we will be taken from Markdown if it's from GitHub. Um, on the right, you have the metadata about the package, who published it, and I'm using Gravatar. Uh, when it was published, the link to the license, if there is a nice license name like MIT, it will be the text here, the project site, the stats, and the versions. And I haven't downloaded, uh, imported all the versions of the packages, so it's empty. Otherwise, it shows all the versions available. So this is just a point of entry for the package itself. Download will download the latest version. I still need to show the latest version here, or also before. Oh, it's just because there is no version right now um, imported, that's why. So that's very basic, but you can browse modules, uh, themes, there is no theme imported here. Uh, it's getting back the icon, so it, it's kind of working. Um, Still many things to do, but uh, I can also import data. And what is interesting here in the also in the data import, 
I'm using LinkPad, which lets me connect to database, okay, and do some C sharp code to constr very easy, like a script language, to create um, um, to create some recipes. So here I'm building an X document, and for each record in my package table, I will create the corresponding recipe. And in the end, I have a nice recipe that I can just import. So I also imported all users uh, before that. This way, when you click on the link, you see exactly who owns that, and Bertrand could already log into the or the forum, sorry, Nick, you see, uh, uh, could already log into the portal because all the data is the same. So users, you see all the users. And I extended the user type to have, let's see if we can find him. Yep, here. If I edit this guy, you can see there is his name, there is email, and you can also have the uh, a display name. OK? Uh, and the website for the user. So it's extending the user uh, account. Um, this way, all the previous users and passwords are um, uh, migrated to the new website. Questions? Oh yes, I see what you mean. Because at some point, I want I wanted to yeah, that would have been nice to write XML directly. Um, okay, okay, yeah, uh, LinkPad is awesome. Okay. Upload. Not yet. Upload is not yet done. I'm working on the details of displaying everything and importing data. And then I can work on the upload. Um, so, uh, gallery. Then, status. No questions so far. Uh, close that. This is my gallery branch. And I will open this one. Yes, I'm like I was like I didn't push anything two hours ago. What is that? Uh, seven days, six days, six days. So we have show default layer by default in widgets admin. Um, what is that? I assume someone the pull request. Or maybe it's forcing the default layer to be default. Show default layer by default in which admin. Let's assume that's that. Add support for new constraints to schema builder. Yes, so this is new. Daniel, you want to comment? Mm, yeah, sure. So I did some digging into this, and uh, because we're troubleshooting some cases of having duplicate records in the database for for bead, and um, did some digging into it, asked around with some people, and realized um, unique constraints have been suggested before, but it's never been added by anyone. So I decided to do the work, and it turned out to not be that much work to add it to Schema Builder. <clears throat> so in a migration, you can now create a, a unique constraint that spans multiple columns. Yeah, so you could already do a unique for a colon, but now you can do it for multiple colons. Mm -hmm. That that's weird that it's not there. I I'm almost sure I'd seen that. Interesting. Oh no no okay. I just we have said, indices yeah. for multiple columns. Sorry. We have indices for multiple columns. Yes, that's what I yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Good. And, then, and then in the subsequent commits after this one, I added a few unique constraints to, to some of the core tables that I think should be there. OK. Uh, 
And by the way, we tested this on all of the providers that we support. So we, we tested on Postgres and My, MySQL and full SQL Server as well as SQL C, and it Good. all works. Thank you. And this one's too. Unique constraint to core settings table. Uh, this one is the one for the default layer. This is on the distributed locking. We'll look at the pull request, but more tests, that's good. Uh, constraints, certain unique constraint name. So it's a branch, you didn't merge it? Uh, it, it should have been merged by now. Okay, this one is not merged, that's weird. Um, Yeah, it's weird because there is a branch here, but it's also duplicated in the other branch. Maybe I'm missing some commits, I don't know. So it should be merged. Uh, short and unique constraint, merge, what is this one? Yes, uh, this is a merge from the pull request on Thursday. This one is just, instead of forcing the release uh, build, you can configure what build you want in MS build, but by default it will be released. Uh, Jean Thierry, it's about fixing the content picker, um, or it's just fixing the search picker. Yes, it is fixing the search picker, which was blocking 192. So that's good. Content type encoding, yep, some title translations were encoding too many times. Um, fixed bugs, refactor and polish distributed log service. Okay, the log branch. Still a branch, right? Doesn't look like it's still a branch. Yeah, it's still a branch. Uh, distributed log service, corrected interface name. This is on the layout. Oh yeah, um, so Sipke worked on uh, an element harvester which will provide all the widgets as elements. So you could add widgets directly in the layout editor. There is a discussion on GitHub about that. But it's a branch, remove and correct, uh, supporting the dot syntax in watched assets. So I, because I created a new module for the gallery, I had the pleasure to test a new um, assets pipeline, uh, which was painful at, at some point because I didn't know how it worked, but when I figured out how it worked, it was easier. So if I go in my theme, I created the assets.json file as uh, suggested. I copied it from the media, so you just add the less files and you say which CSS. Then I created, so this one is using that too, which, and it's very nice because I was able to build all Bootstrap with the, this infrastructure. So in my assets, I put Bootstrap as a folder. My less file, which includes the Bootstrap um, root one and also all my customizations, which is very nice. Um, so I'm just compiling, compiling mine then, not this one. And, and, and this is a sub theme, which will imp import the bootstrap main one and everything works magically. But for bootstrap, I had to define this property not to generate source maps, otherwise there is a file which is breaking the, the compilation. And I had to do something else. I wanted I wanted um, the gulp uh, script to detect changes in... So when I'm building this one, for instance, I want changes to, to be, uh, which are done there to trigger the, the, the build of my dependent one, this one. So I had to add a watch property and Daniel validated it, which is now that you can say from these assets, watch also this file because my files here 
are dependent on these ones. So this way, if I change the, the master theme, the child theme will be rebuilt too. Okay, so that's a very, so watch. And oh, no, it was already there, but it didn't support the dot dot slash something. So now I have added the, the support here, very simple to do. Uh, they told me use resolve. So I'm resolving the path now everywhere. Good. And it works pretty well. Um, I was uh, pleasantly surprised by how easy it is to use. And once you understand how this works in the Task Runner Explorer, that's pretty neat. The only thing which, which I'm missing now is when, oh, this thing, what, what is it? When you, what, stop. What is it? When I click, it's always appearing. Okay, I won't click. So when you watch, uh, start watching, if there is an exception during the script, it's breaking the watch. You have to rewatch again. So this is the only thing I'm struggling with right now. Wow, oh, that, that should be taken care of by the plumber plugin. I, I had no idea. I tried to put some try catch somewhere and it didn't work, so I don't know. And oh, and cool. and you see this one generate source maps, for instance. This is breaking everything. So if, if I don't put that, it's breaking not the it's breaking the first time and not the second time. I mean if I click build, the source map will say, Oh, there is an issue with source map. I build again, there is no more issue. But if I watch and I don't put that then if I change my file, that will be an issue the first time, and it breaks the watch, and I have to watch it again. So I just put that. That's weird, mm -hmm. but yeah, we can take it offline if you if you know what's the issue. Yeah. Um, widget elements. So this is uh, what Sipke has been working on to import widgets as elements. Uh, it will show us when it's done. Um, corrected message and obsolete attribute. Okay. Okay. This is the distributed looking branch. Uh, by the way, just for your information, Booster 4 is now using SCSS instead of less. Yeah. So. We've talked about it for um, actually in the, in the topic of the admin theme because uh, Jasmine suggested to use admin LT as a dashboard which is an MIT Bootstrap based dashboard and it's using Bootstrap 3 and he mentioned that uh, Bootstrap 4 is using uh, SAS now and he was actually suggesting to use SAS already but uh, we said no, let's stick with Bootstrap 3 right now because this dashboard is using Bootstrap 3 and uh, once, because it's just alpha also Bootstrap 4 so far so we don't know when it will be released mm -hmm. but yes interesting and they also say that in Bootstrap 5 they will use post CSS and not oh, yeah. so okay they'll just they do what they want they say technically literally oh we do what we want and we don't care if you don't want to update just stay with the Bootstrap 3 uh, uh, and by, by the way um, I have I'm I intend to add uh, SCSS support to the golf okay. pipeline as well mm -hmm. as less so that, both will be yeah. supported good that's cheap to do yeah. Um, so initializing tenants, what is that? Hmm. It's a branch, we we'll ask him, unless Daniel knows. Yeah, I know what this is. Uh, this is about uh, having a separate um, tenant state for while you're running the recipe so that you can block all other requests while that's happening. Oh, I see. Uh, so you could break otherwise your, okay, I see. I think I had this issue actually. I was running an Orchard site and I hit the the page again and okay. We'll see. Convenience overload taking a default value factory method. Info set helper. Um, missing properties to HTTP request placeholder, good. Maybe, yes, this might be the ones which were uh, breaking some of the feature. I have to check on the GitHub issues because I commented, please implement the missing methods and these are missing methods. So I assume this is the fix for that. I don't know who pulled it. 
Silke. Ok. Euh... Oh oh. That sounds ominous. I'm just thinking because uh, no, actually, I'm miss. It's messing up my mind with some other uh, project. Okay. No, because in Microsoft you can't use open source projects for specific versions until they've been approved version by version. And for instance, I know that on another project in Microsoft we could not use JSON after 6.2 because it has not it hadn't been validated by the lawyers. So we could just use six or something like that. So that's why I wasn't like, okay. Why, why this map? But uh, I, I wasn't going to do the Newton soft one to begin with, but then I realized the Azure SDK uses it. Oh, yeah, the version mess. Okay, as long as it all the tests pass, that's fine. And it's a dev, so that's okay. Mm -hmm. Missing PDF files or PDB? Yeah, PDB. Oh, PDB. PDF, that's okay. <laughs> PDF. Why do we need PDF files? Okay. And you need a PDB file here? Why? I don't know. I just I when I update the Azure binaries, I always just take everything that's in the distribution. Okay. This one is the oh, and this morning, uh, Gustavo on Gitter, the chat tool was suggest, was mentioning that if you use the disable theme part, which will prevent the theme from being applied when you render a specific uh, content type, if you had this part. It was also disabling it in the um, admin. So he fixed it, made a pull request, and I merged it. Admin filter that is applied. And this is the merge. Good. Um, so status about the release. Orchard. Uh, I know that at least we need to fix the um, issue that is I think related with to the um, HTTP context handling uh, right. in migrations. Right. And maybe, well, I hope it's fixed by this thing. So can you point me to the bug or did you share it? Oh, uh, I don't have it at hand. Oh, how can I find it? Uh, I have one migrations. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but if you search for migrations, it will show the come up. So I have this one at least uh, that I think you commented on. Oh no, you tagged. Um, Ultra designer doesn't work. Okay, and maybe this is also related to the one from uh, Jean Thierry. No, this is related to high membership apparently. Okay, I look into that. Uh, and you said, look for migration. Which one? I think uh, 5490. This is the one, two, three, four, fifth issue from the top. This one. Yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. I think the one I commented on Thursday. Where is that? Where blue 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 look at that. Uh, looking at the comedy uh, the code looks green. Uh, yeah Yes, so somehow in the discussion it's references it's referencing this commit when everything started to break and honestly When I see these changes, I'm like, how Ultra is still working? Meaning I don't understand what the impact of the change is. 
Zoltan, if you want to look into it when you have time. If you have time, feel free. Um, so this one is high and is blocking. Yeah, could you please um, paste the link to the um, commits you just showed into the chat window? Of this bug? Um, it, it was 15 seconds ago. Yeah. Let me click on this bug, and at the end, my comment points to the commit that they mentioned, at which point it was broken. Um, but this commit is interesting, but it's an old one apparently, I think so, the May 27. But the things which have been changed here, I'm like, whoa, I don't want to touch that. <laughs> is that a single instance, right? I, there are many things. So for, in the commit, for instance, Maybe not this one, but the one in the, in the discussion here. I could see the same thing register as the um, per work context and after per shell. So I'm like, what's the point of registering for two different lifetimes? So, so, many things didn't make sense or I didn't understand. And uh, well, actually in this discussion, trying to fix what was introduced by this commit, but we know Sipke, he knows what he's doing. And, but I don't understand what, what he's doing. And changing, for instance, you see this func to a concurrent dictionary of whatever a context key, which is now an object and no more I component. I'm like, I don't know what, what's happening here. Look at that. So for instance, there were, there are new thread statics. The thread stat, I, I don't know how it works. I don't know what's happening. I need more time to understand. And the is background context. Oh, whoa. I'm, I'm afraid. I'm scared. Uh, I think I reviewed this and it looks uh, mostly all right. The, the issue here was, I think that uh, we needed some, we needed to fix HTTP context for background tasks. Okay. And it seemed that uh, no matter what we do, it will be just hacking around unless we do something with the fact that uh, IHTTP context accessory is an application by singleton. And all of the changes are because it, now it's not an application by singleton. Yeah, to try to understand why now this thing is happening and if you can fix that too. Perfect. Work context accessory migrations. Technically, it should have been hard to, to, to fix this kind of thing, but but the, the fix I saw, which was suggested, I think was very weird. Um, I can't find it. If you look at the, you see, he's adding something like instance per matching lifetime scope shell, and the line before was the same thing with work. So I like, no, can't do. You can't say it's per work and per shell, or so just it say it's, be, it shouldn't be singleton. I don't think it should be a singleton. So per shell means singleton, and per work means. So it's like this one. This thing is a shortcut to singleton. And the uh, work string is a is a shortcut to lifetime scope. So I don't know how well. So these are blocking, and we need time to to understand how to fix it. Uh, and I think multiple bugs are related to the same issue. The HTTP context missing thing. We'll see. Um, so they are tagged. That's good. This one might be related to. Okay, tagged for 192. We are. We have two, at least two, uh, blocking issues, um, and I don't think what is there any blocking issue on Dev. Leopard refers with index one exception and localized routes. Got a fix. He's got a fix. We want it. And localized routes. That's an old one. Or is it? 
why is it marked as high? I don't know, I will check. Okay. Uh, questions on the status, some bugs, blocking bugs. Harvest. Harvest, what, what's, what's new for harvest? Um, communication has been done. Um, people are registering. What else? Uh, Sergio made the pages. So Sergio made the where is that accommodation thing? The main hotel. I updated the link here so you can book online. Oh, don't click. I have to click. Uh, Ninety-seven for one person. Uh, this is the hotel for the conference. This is where most people will stay. Um, what else? So people are contacting me for a sponsorship. Um, for some of them, it's uh, it's okay. They know what to do. Um, I haven't answered everyone, or maybe everyone haven't contacted me, or just mentioned they would be interested. So I will continue the discussions. Um, feel free to speak up if you want to be a sponsor for any in any way. I have we have many. Uh, many ways to sponsor the event. Uh, what else? Um, sessions, we already talked about it. And I think that's it. Questions? Am I missing anything here? Nothing interesting? Okay. Question for Harvest? <coughs> Nope. Okay. What else? Um, yeah, so Sergio, you are, I think, you are using the wrong window. <laughs> this is my Skype, and there is another Skype for business. So I won't answer on the, my Skype. Uh, Nick, you want to do a demo? Yeah, I can do it, am I? One second. It will only be short. You can go. Um, okay. yeah. Tell me when you can see my screen. Is it still recording? Yes, it's still recording. I can't see it yet. I can see it. Yeah? Yep. Okay, cool. All right, awesome. So people can start seeing it. Um, okay, so one of the um, issues that uh, I've seen that people have asked about for uh, feature-wise is uh, being able to specify their own module parts. Um, so at the moment in Orchard, we have just modules. And then we also have a few other loaders that load up like uh, Orchard.core. And I think that's about it. And there's also a theme one so for the theme folder. But people want to be able to add their own, um, their own in. So what I've done in Brochard is um, I've used the options framework of uh, ASP.NET vNext. So what you can now say is, um, so last week I said I showed that we have um, we have what's called a, a client and a host. And basically the client just moves up a new, a new. And with the client, you have your default startup 
and in here you can say in your configure services you can say add web host so that that will new you up a new a new orchard maybe the name might change but it will new you up a new host say okay well now i want to I, I don't know if it's just me, but I can't really hear you, Nick. Oh, it's not. For me too. It's bad. Oh, can you hear me better now? Sometimes it's good, sometimes now, it's yeah. bad. Comes and goes. Oh. Um, I'm not sure. You, yeah. you sound like you're using your laptop microphone yep. or something. Hang on. Let me plug it. Because he was using his laptop microphone. That's so unprofessional. Such a noob. It looks like you're using a phone, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> That's like 9080, something like that, no? Is that, is that better? Yes. Okay, right. Let me but try we, and but we don't, yeah. Stop. Okay. Sorry about that, guys. Um, well, Zoltan, congratulations of your microphone. We haven't heard it for like two months. Really? Oh, great. I'm, I'm pleased. Okay, can you hear me? Can you see my screen? Not yet, loading, yes. Yeah. Okay, and my, my voice is okay? Well, technically, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's because of my American accent. Um, okay, so... Um, okay, so I'll start again. So last week I presented the um, the fact that you've got clients and you have a host. And one of the issues that um, people have been talking about is being able to add their own extension folders, or sorry, their own module folders. And by default at the moment, you currently have modules and you have your core folder, and those are loaders that are in the Orchard framework. So what I've done in Brochard is um, I've made it so that that's now scoped to the client. So your client dictates um, where your modules are loaded from. And the way I've done that is I have used the uh, ASP.NET um, options pipeline. So what that allows me to do is basically configure options um, in my service setup and that then gets injected later on into my um, later on into my I think it's called IX extension loader something along those lines. Hold on, let me just find it. How did you do that? How did you look for something? Oh, control comma. Is it three sharper? No, this is uh, 2015. It was the same in 2013. Oh, I was using control semicolon. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> but I can't find it. So let me just uh, do a control F and see if I can find where this is getting injected into. So you can see, ah, it's going. It's getting injected into here. So I can inject um, options into my extension loader. And then that will have all my um, all my module locations specified. So rather than creating um, creating separate classes and um, having to modify the host or modify um, Orchard Framework, whatever, I can just make um, I can specify the configuration at a much higher level, and that means that my my client can say, hey, these are where my folders are. These are my manifest files, and I don't have to touch any of the core framework in order to do that, um, which I think is kind of nice. Um, yeah, so it shifts the configuration up a level. What okay. do you guys think? Interesting. I need to look at what the options thing is in ASP.NET, but... Service configure. Uh, Nick, are you aware of the um, uh, similar changes um, in the standard orchard? 
I, I've been tracking some of the changes that you guys have uh, have been changing, and where I see it uh, being applicable, I've moved them across. Uh, I see them being less applicable, I've left them. So I, I haven't moved everything across. Only, I mean, there's there's certain things where I wouldn't move things across at all because you guys are well. You guys, us, we're using Autofac, for example, in Orchard Framework, and I'm not using Autofac in this solution. I'm using the standard um, uh, DI container, for example. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I am. Tr I'm trying. I'm trying my hardest to track the changes that are going on, um, whilst also doing refactoring on this. Cool, thank you. You're very welcome. So when do you ship? <laughs> uh, not yet. Uh, I haven't got a U. I haven't got a proper UI on it yet. I only have um, some text and uh, and a setup. So. Okay, cool. Um, what else? So nothing on chat. Does anyone have any? Topics to talk about. Trying to think of something that we need decision on. Um, how, um, just a, a question about the upcoming release. How? What can we do to to sort of drive that home? to make sure that the few remaining issues that we have are fixed by someone and that we can actually do a release? Um, if someone wants to focus on that explicitly, he can speak up and say, I'm taking that, it will be fixed by tomorrow. Or it's up to anyone to look into it. Not everyone can fix it. So I know Zoltan has the brain to do it. If I focus a lot for like one week, I can. Sipka maybe because he, he did the change. Um, so that that's the issue. We know who can fix this kind of bug, and we have to wait for them to fix it. Uh, you might be able, Daniel, too. I know how confident you are with shells and things like this, and HTTP context and work context and lifetime scopes. Uh, but as long as we can repro it and it's fixed, we take it and boom. So maybe we could um, have some calls for volunteers right here and now. We can assign those bugs to people. Yeah, we can. It usually doesn't work well a lot. If you want to take it, I can assign it to you, and we know it's you. Um, but there are some bugs which are assigned to people, and sometimes it prevents someone else to work on it, and but the guy is not working on it, so that's... Mm. conflicting um, so I'm just thinking about whether there's a way to avoid this just dragging on and on because nobody like takes the initiative I was hoping maybe you as yeah, a yeah, well, I know the only guy who, that we could force to work on is me because I'm paid <laughs> for that uh, excellent <laughs> but I'd like to work on the gallery too and ship some gallery at some point uh, but yeah, I understand it might be higher priority. There is this one and there is other ones. Um, so I assume I will assign it to myself because otherwise you will blame me. I, I wouldn't mind if you assign like one of them to me, one to Sipke, one to Zoltan, and like whoever you think is more fit to do a respective bug. Wouldn't mind you taking like a leadership role, and just telling people what to do. Um, we can do it ourselves. I can't tell people what to do. I can just ask politely. I'm not a dictator. Um, you're, you're not very polite either, but I, I get your point. Also. <laughs> um, issues. Oh, I'm not sharing. Let me share my screen.
Yep. You see? Look at that. Yeah. It's Did been signed. Assigned July 9. Self-assigned. Like, hey, I'm taking that, guys. <laughs> so yes, we trust you. I will. I will remind him. But Thank I can you. also assign some more people. <laughs> can, oh, yeah. can you have multiple assignees? I think so. Why wouldn't you? Oh no, crap. Yeah. So, but you can remind him that he, he got one month and a half to fix it. He, he didn't. Yeah, I will. What was unass okay unassigned? Okay, self-assigned. Yeah, I'll try to. Yeah, I'll try to understand the issue and fix it. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, every time I look back at the code, I'm I'm rediscovering it. It's it's funny. At yeah, this point, again, I told Zoltan I had an issue, a very stupid issue, and just by trying to understand what was not working, I was looking at the code, even the code I wrote, and I, oh, I didn't know it was doing that. Um, so this one and what was the other one? Uh, Orchard designer tools don't work. I'm sure it's related. No, no, it's not. What we say? I think we said it was not related. It doesn't seem to be related. And I'm assigning it to you, Daniel, because you helped do this uh, change. Remember? No. What? I membership in the form authentication service. Oh yeah. The right. removing a dependency, which I didn't manage to do, and you managed to do. That's true. Yeah. So you can spend 10 minutes on it, and if you can't, assign it to me. OK. You have 10 minutes. No, you're busy. And and Zoltan wants one. That's fine, Zoltan. I can find one for you. <laughs> well, I really spam, so I, I can't promise anything. Well, you can assign it to someone else, if you want. <laughs> because you are assigning Oh, let's, let's send it to, to Piotr. Piotr has all the answers. He just doesn't share the answer. That's the issue. Uh, layout pound driver phase. We that is a dev one. Well, you are safe for now, Sultan. We might ping you for uh, for this one if you have an ID <laughs> because you know shells. I will jump in if it's really necessary. Thank you. Uh, that should be good for 192. And dev is uh, is 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 this one is weird that it's marked as high. And this one I will try to repro. You see assignee, I'm sure he ought to assign himself. You see self-assigned on May 7. What, what should we do? Mm -hmm. So I will assign myself. I'm sure I'm assigned to other ones, but yeah. Okay. Oh, we should put an ETA too. My stone. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. One more demo, Nick. <laughs> no, okay. Um, other topics? Thank you, Daniel, for uh, raising the issue. Um, maybe then look at issues just quickly to see if we are missing anything. This one is is uh, fixed. It will be closed when we merge 19x in dev. Um, this one is for Sipke. We'll see. This one, actually, I feel stupid. I looked at this bug. The content manager the destroy. I'm like, what is this thing? What is destroy? I never heard of, of it. And I look at the code, and actually there is a destroy. Um, so Sipke made it when, or Sipke or Daniel, I don't know, uh, when I assume when the audit tray module was uh, done, I think so, or the clone from the audit tray, I don't know, something related to audit tray and clone, uh, or restore, restore and destroy. And I see now there is destroy and there is um, a restore. And it says that when you destroy the auto route part, we should also delete the alias records, which is not wrong. So, um, yeah. so, just to mention that there is a destroy method now. Um, 
user login failed, activity missing. User logged out, user login failed activity. So this is this is not actually a completely new feature, but just partially it was missing. Why? Uh, because uh, this alone wouldn't just work, right? The, there should be something already built in for this. Just this um, activity was missing. User login failed. Yes, this alone cannot work. Must be missing something here. But at the same time, they are all the same. So maybe there is a generic handler based on the event name, and then it will work to be. I'm sure she tried it. Um, this one, this one, I thought, so we have a dozen, uh, okay, this may be a local issue. This one is interesting, um, so we need to fix the text because it's too big for the box that we have in the dashboard, okay, and then there is a question. Uh, yeah. Oh, in so you know, it's it's so it's so true. I'm like, sorry. So the iframe doesn't show up if your admin is in HTTPS because the Orchard Project.net website, which serves the data, doesn't have the certificate, and it doesn't have the certificate because last time we updated the certificate, I was like, why do we? Uh, why should I update the certificate on Orchard Project.net? We don't use HTTPS anywhere in the in the site. There is no authentication, so who cares? And now I understand why we need the HTTPS certificate in the Orchard Project.net site just for this iframe if the dashboard is on HTTPS. So that's a good point. Thank you. Then another is another question is from uh, Steve Gustavo. Why use an iframe at all? There is a reason. I just don't remember it. Because you bet we talked about all the solutions how to do these things. And Bertrand might know. Same he's... origin policy, maybe? Because I know you suggested the, the Ajax yeah. stuff you have worked on at some point. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it might be because of safe origin policies that we would have to set up for that. Um, I'm not saying it can't work, but... Oh, so because if we do an Ajax on a different domain, it will be blocked by the... Yeah, there are ways to make it work that are kind of clunky. I mean, yeah, we totally could, and it would it would fix the layout problems when when it's too big. So uh, I think the main reason may be laziness. I I'm not sure. I know it was a big deal. We did a meeting for that, and well, you know, it was what five years ago that we <laughs> built that. Yeah, uh, there were reasons. Or maybe yeah, yeah, the web has changed. Changed. <laughs> Things have changed. The the browser support for okay, maybe. Uh, cross domain things is better now. And uh, but in any case, you you kind of need to set up something on the server. Um, I sure. think. Or you'd have to do something like no. It's uh, just yeah, the, you'd have to do dirty things. Otherwise. Maybe it's just at the web API level. You just say uh, cross origin load on the response, and it will work. I think that's just what you need to do. Yep, probably. Okay. Well, that's a good point. We could do it server side if this is an issue, but, but probably it's good to have HTTPS anyway. Yeah, sure. Um, it, it's just that uh, we we don't update that that server that often. We should. And uh, once we have the new website, it will be easier. Once I'm done with the gallery, I will work on the website, right? At least it's a website, it's not one of those old uh, instances. 
Like no, no. Gallery. Well, it's the same as the gallery. It's a cloud service on the same machine. Are you sure? Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought we had moved that to, we had, we, to a website. No, it's still a, a uh, gallery. Uh, Your part, the documentation is a website. Yeah, sure. But the website itself... Not even our child, but... Yeah, but the, the main website is a cloud service. Really? I see the database in SQL still. It's called Gallery Phone. Sure. Yeah. But no, well, well, I understand, but no, no, I think it's a cloud service, yes. Because we have, yeah, almost sure. Okay. Um, good then. Done? See you on Thursday. Thank you guys. Bye everyone. And on Thursday all the bugs are fixed. Bye bye.